So hello everyone, welcome to the Selenium Conference 22. We have the State of the Union session, the Selenium Keynote by Devgo Molina, who is a staff software engineer at Soft, Soft Labs, and Manoj Kumar, who is the VP Developer Relations at Lambda Test. Without quick delay, I will be handing over the stage to them. So welcome, Devgo and Manoj. Hello, everyone. I want to wish you all um, good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending wherever you are. People from all over the world are joining us. And we are extremely happy to welcome you to the Selenium Conf India 2022. We are very happy to have you here. And I am even happier to join the stage with one of the first people I met when I joined the project, who is Manuj. Thanks, Diego. Um, hey, everyone. Welcome from my side. Um, you know, it's a fantastic conference. Good to be back here. Very unfortunately, we couldn't be in person. There is still a bit of risk involved, but hopefully um, you don't have to wait too longer to meet in person. Uh, we will have some news for you in the um, next two days or the next day. Um, so welcome again. Uh, happy to share stage with Diego. Um, I think since he mentioned Diego, I think he, he met one of the first person that was me. And I wanted to just recapitulate some of the memories, Diego. Uh, I think it was 2017 conference when um, uh, I and Marcus was um, facilitating a Selenium Grid workshop. So we run pre-conf workshops and Selenium Grid is one of them. And um, we, on the extra sections, if you ever attended one of the workshops, you would know that is, we always have an extra section and we cover some of the community projects uh, because they are fantastic. And uh, Selenium was one and Diego was one of the maintainers of that along with Leo Gallucci, his good friend. And Leo was my good friend. And um, I told Leo that, you know, we are talking about Selenium. And then he said, yeah, I mean, I'm here and uh, my friend Diego is here. So that was our first meeting. Diego was a very silent uh, person with a tote bag. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, and then I invited him to the grid workshop and he spoke about Zelenium, uh, which was eye opening. You know, he added a lot more details and then people swarmed with Diego because that project had a lot more, you know, um, features from a usability perspective, like what a user would like, like video recording dashboard and all of them. So, um, that was the moment that I met Diego. And um, so you could imagine a person who started like that and now giving a keynote in front of all of you, that's that's because all of the commitment that Diego was given to the project over the period of time. And this is my uh, second keynote in the State of the Union. First time I shared with Simon and carry forwarding the legacy from him. And I hope we thrive this Selenium project from here and so happy to share the stage with Diego and um, welcome everyone. I don't want to directly jump into the State of Union and what lies ahead and what is the future of Selenium, um, but it wouldn't be uh, good if you wanted to thank Simon. Um, Simon, Thank you so much for what you've done to the Selenium project and also personally from me. Um, and since you like puppy, here is a thank you note from the puppy. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get the picture of Matilda, but I'm sure you'll be happy seeing the puppy. Um, and personally, uh, I've learned a lot from you and uh, thank you so much for what you've done to the project. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Simon has been um, probably the most important person in the project for years. And now he's leading us in a state where the project is ready to keep growing. So. I also personally want to thank him because he was one of the persons who helped me to get into the project and he really taught me a bunch of things that made me a better engineer, a better person and actually I learned a lot of open source um, things with him. So truly thank you Simon, thank you from all the team of the Selenium project and we hope to see you around uh, a bit more often. Yeah, he's around, he made a cameo appearance on Slack channel couple of days ago so good to see him and i hope you're listening to this if not um hi to you again and from all of us at the selenium conference all right speaking of teamwork um i think couldn't agree more for diego added on top of what i said um so when there is a teamwork and collaboration wonderful things can be achieved isn't it teamwork has an incredible power to increase productivity satisfaction and also in my opinion it boosts individual morale when you work together and also teamwork is very important uh, for the success of any product uh, and especially in the open source world it is very very critical because we work on very different time zones and for most of us it's not a day job and it must be a side project and that's eventually how it started uh, when we all started with open source and especially around selenium uh, where we spend the precious time uh, you know spare time that we had to work on it well Teamwork, speaking of teamwork, it may sound bureaucratic, but we are not. We are just a bunch of nerds and volunteers, uh, but also we need certain things to be organized so that we could uh, deliver Selenium um, versions in a more organized manner for you. So now let me help you understand how the Selenium project is organized and governed. 
here you go meet the project leads um, we call it project leadership committee uh, so this group governs uh, the overall continuity and the future of the project uh, which also acts as a bridge between the selenium project and the um, sfc which we call it software freedom conservancy what is sfc or software freedom conservancy sf selenium is part of sfc they are they manage a group of open source projects they are non profit they help us work through if you come across any legal issues like trademark or um, so we had legal issues in the past from someone running certification programs and claiming it as an official selenium uh, certification so we manage uh, this sfc manage all that for us and on top of it they also manage funding and sponsorship now plc gets involved in many different ways um, such as whenever the project spends money enters into legal agreements and or deal deal with lawyers and we also take care of the community activities around selenium ecosystem for example this very own selenium conference and uh, plc and fsfc i think we meet monthly once to discuss about the selenium and the project needs and here you go the current members of the plc are uh, marcus merrill my good friend who has also been around the same time that i've been with selenium project over a decade and then we have myself there and here are our two two handles and um, wish it was in person so we could do a round of applause uh, but nevertheless uh, please give uh, your love on chat uh, and please welcome bill mackey to the project leadership committee uh, bill is also a veteran he's been around selenium ecosystem for a very long time he spent around 9 10 years in sauce labs and um, since then he has been with selenium uh, conference and in fact sauce swaps was one of the first companies who um, helped and supported the idea of bringing up selenium conference and bill was associated since then so you could imagine bill's experience there and uh, we are more than happy to have him here and help us uh, and apart from that uh these are the current members and this is an enough um we wanted to add more people and uh, we have plans to add more people and especially to bring in more diversity and um plc also helps pretty much anything the technical leadership committee needs on a day to day basis and act as a sounding board uh, for their needs and now what is tlc uh, they are nothing but the technical leads of the project um so this group um typically maintains the technical decisions and roadmap of the selenium project uh, which are responsible for a high level technical guidance of the project so each of them has made humongous contributions to the project across client bindings um, probably you know these names i'll just revisit once jim evans there you go he is the man behind the dotnet bindings for many many years and then you have titus fortner um, who has been around in uh, you know making it, uh, ruby bindings and also recently he became a polyglot developer looking at you know taking over uh, dotnet uh, bindings and also uh, many different languages and alex um, uh, for, uh, for ruby bindings and puja also looking at java from a grid perspective mainly and she has her on node js and then you have david mainly looking at python uh, bindings and also he was uh, the driving force behind making selenium a web driver spec and also leading the web driver by day spec and last but not the least we have the person along with me setting the stage diego i uh, was mainly working on java and also docker selenium and also he leads most of the new initiatives that we do anything technically right so tlc team are the folks who thinks you know act on so if you're wondering what they do um so they basically answer more questions on hey what features do we add on like how do we shape the next version what is the path towards selenium 5 so all of this happens between this team and all of this conversation happens over the slack in a very open manner and um if you are an old school and if you use irc uh, we have mirrored slack and irc so uh, you could use both of them uh, visit selenium.dev and see how you could join um and uh, most of the conversation as i said it's a, it's a it's a fantastic teamwork um where, you know especially we are working from different time zones and the team meet biweekly once in an async asynchronous manner uh, we the meeting happens over slack and we also update the meeting minutes um on the website and tlc closely works with plc on making sure the contribution policies are in place and also help govern the members of tlc on how could one become a tlc member all right and that's everything from a governance perspective it's everything we have updated and it's available on the serena website now if this is inspiring and sounding interesting to you well you could join us for sure um contributing code is not the only option to join our crew um we go by the saying no contribution is small we welcome all sorts of contribution um so here we go from first you could answer questions from user groups there are many user groups like linkedin groups uh, selenium user groups web driver user groups and um there are main, you know we could maintain websites you know translations or uh, there are a lot of people 
raise issues with no proper uh, details on reproducible test cases you could you know work with them make sure everything is you know perfect for us to reproduce and you know fix uh, issues faster for you and of course you could if you're a fan of you know any particular language and if you wanted to contribute um, selenium on that particular bindings you could feel free to check check out the um, selenium uh, project we have a better documentation than ever diego will touch touch upon it in a couple of slides so you, you could hack and contribute and of course we, we have the blog blog section on selenium dev um, so you could contribute there um, as well so there is a number of ways that you could contribute uh, there's a misconception that selenium is very nerd uh, nerdy people and uh, you need to contribute code to become uh, part of the crew that isn't the case um, no contribution is solved please we welcome all your contributions. So moving on to the next one, I wanted to share, there are a group of people who made this true. Um, it's time to celebrate the Selenium stars. Uh, we wanted to acknowledge the contributors across um, Selenium ecosystem. Uh, uh, if you wanted to give a huge round of applause, uh, please show your love over the chat. Um, Krishan Mahadevan, relentlessly answering Selenium questions on user Selenium users group. I don't know if people still look at Selenium user group Everyone is looking at Slack these days, but he's still there uh, looking at Selenium user groups and answering them. So kudos to you, Krishnan. Thank you so much for doing that for us. And uh, Pallavi for helping us with Selenium conference proposals and Marit uh, for wonderful uh, comments on making sure um, the speakers understand, uh, you know, uh, we have, you know, helping them shape up the proposals and Srinivas and Ansai for doing the same and also contributing Appium for humongously and um, Shama and Anand for helping us in conference committee. And also we have Robin Gupta for actively helping on um, Slack channel. You can see him around answering questions um, and also helping with the conference. Last but not the least, uh, Naresh Chain. Thank you so much. He's been uh, around with us, helping us organize Selenium conference since 2014. Uh, so thank you so much, Naresh. Uh, again, a huge round of applause for him, uh, thanking him for uh, everything that he does for the Selenium community. While Selenium is open source and we thrive based on open source contributors, um, let's not forget how the cloud vendors are helping. Absolutely. Um, I know we have been in a, in a phase of change where some people are leaving the project, some other ones are joining, but we should remember uh, the role that vendors have played in the recent two years uh, for the project. We can start with Applitools, for example, around 2018 when they helped us to bring the Selenium ID back to life when it was a Firefox only browser extension, then it moved to a new standard that helped it live and, and work in different browsers as well. Uh, and then they just started to pass by and when we needed help to bring Selenium 4 move forward and move a bit faster so you all the community could enjoy it, then by coincidence at the same time or around the same time, Sauce Labs and Browser Stack created their open source teams. And that allowed me, for example, myself and, and with the contributions of Tidus and other ones uh, to work in the project. And then with David Burns and his team, we actually helped a lot to move the project forward. And that was key to help Simon and Jim and Alexei and the other ones to make Selenium for a reality. And now more looking into the future, we also have Lambda Test, who recently created their open source team as well with uh, Manush leading it. And it's really a privilege to be in this uh, special position where we are able to work in companies who pay us full time to work in the Selenium project. So thank you to all of you and, and looking forward to, to keep this project moving forward. Now let's jump a bit um, to, we want to share with you what we have been doing in the project during these last two years. We didn't have a conference during 2021 for uh, clear reasons and we want to share with you what has been happening in the project during the last years. So um, at the end of 2019 we were starting to work very hard in Selenium 4. However this was not really easy because we had so many things around to look at. Basically we had around 500 issues and between 90 and 100 pull requests that were open and they were very distracting because you were in the need to review them, to be responsive, and so on. So it really started to become complicated and hard to focus on the upcoming Selenium version while being responsive to the community. And um, what happened there is that, uh, for example, um, 
when people were creating issues, um, the, the result was that normally the first, so the average time we were taking to respond to you when you created this issue was around 37 days. And the average time to close that issue was a 120 days. So that didn't leave us in a good state of mind because we feel that we're really like missing the opportunity to help you better. Uh, now, when we think about contributors, welcoming them to the, to the community and to the project, one key thing was the pull request, right? And the average time we were spending to reply uh, for the first time to the pull request was around 40 days. And then to actually merge the pull request or maybe close it because it didn't really actually make sense to merge it was around 132 days. Then um, this makes you think, um, okay, you have a bunch of stuff to do, right? And sometimes you cannot really see the forest because of the trees. Like there are too many things in front of you that doesn't let you see the overall um, goal. And really to move forward and to help others contribute, you need to enable a fluent contribution process. So maybe a little cleaning needs to be done first. Uh, when you have too many small issues and you're getting started to contribute into the project, maybe you should put things into order at the beginning. So you are questioning yourself, are issues easy to troubleshoot? Is a contributor wasting time deciding what to work on? So what we did was to actually work into cleaning issues. And, and then uh, we took time to start cleaning everything up, to welcome new people and to let the ones who were working um, to be more effective. So since early 2020, we have been on an ongoing effort to be very responsive to the community and to the potential contributors. So we have between, um, at that point right now, we're having around 90 to 100 issues open. Uh, and this is going down month by month. And Talking about issues, for example, before we were taking around 37 days to reply to the issue. Now the average is nine to 10 days, but if you look more recently, it is like only a couple of days. And if you think about um, welcoming contributions, so welcoming folks who are taking the time to contribute the code into the project, then that means uh, that we had before a response time average to reply to your pull request from, uh, it was around 40 days. Now it went down to four days. Um, and in general, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to resolve these pull requests quick, uh, like more quickly than before. So before we were needing around 132 days to close a pull request or to merge it, now we're taking around 22 days, which is Obviously, this is not ideal. You should get feedback faster, but this is much better than before. And that's why we're growing slowly into, uh, into a mood where people are looking more forward to contribute to this project. Something else that we have been spending time is um, improving how we do releases and their frequency. The project has always been careful about having good number in the bus factor. So, if you're not familiar with this term, the bus factor is a measurement uh, of the risk you take uh, between spreading the information, the capabilities across the team members. So for example, if you say, in case I get hit by a bus, then all the information I know, I only know it myself and nobody else can do that, what I'm doing. Uh, but really more than that about this uh, playful and, and kind of terrific sometimes, uh, terrific um, term, the idea is that we want to give peace of mind to the different maintainers and allow them to take free time and not to be around whenever they want to. So if someone is maintaining a, a given component like Java or something and they want to take like three months off, like we got you back. There is no need for you to be here the whole time. You're a volunteer and take your free time and come back whenever you want to contribute. And basically what we have done is that the release process has been documented publicly and all components in the project have a clear and dedicated process for release. But more importantly, at least three people know how to do a release uh, in, a, in any given time. 
Um, it's, it's really I mean, a pleasure to say that Tidus has been key in this process, pushing every single thing across all the board to make this happen. Um, and we're also heading to a release frequency of between four to six weeks. Um, and yeah, part of the reason is because Chrome is releasing every four to six weeks and we need to update the CDP bindings so you are able to use all the features that we have heard in different talks. But also, there is a need of push out all the bug fixes, all the new features, but really more importantly, we want to get more feedback and more frequently for, from you. And, you know, all the things I've been mentioning and we have been mentioning together, so all those efforts, having a more transparent governance model, a better contributed onboarding experience and the documentation we are able to motivate different people across the ecosystem to join the project. And they have been very helpful um, to answer questions, to contribute to the project, um, be present in different channels, and in general, to give a fresh breath to the project. So if we go into detail, we, we can um, highlight that Ian, Koso, and Luis, they have been really, really active helping to translate the documentation to Chinese, Japanese and Portuguese, respectively. And for example, we have James, who has been very active in the Docker Selenium project. And recently he got a new uh, MacBook, the M1, who has uh, this, this uh, type of laptop, has the Arium architecture. And then he helped us to move all these images, the Docker Selenium images, to the new architecture. And we have a community project called the uh, Selenium. We have now Simon K, who is part of the PyTest project as well. He came to help us with the Python bindings and reviewing pull requests and improving things like type hints and code styling between others. We also have Todd and Robert, who are the bright minds behind the Selenium IDE. And Todd has been working on it for a while, but recently joined these efforts and, and basically they're working on something really exciting that we're gonna share in a few slides for you. Um, and to, to complete this wonderful board of people, um, Bonnie, who is the creator of WebDriver Manager, uh, recently he started to help in the project in different areas. For example, he did something that was the migration in our Java test suite from JUnit 4 to JUnit 5, which was an incredible effort. Plus, now he's working in some improvements to the documentation in terms of running the examples in a CI pipeline, which will make our documentation slightly better. Well, while this is all great, I just want to add, thank you, James, uh, for creating the M1 Docker images. It was super helpful on our Selenium Grid workshop um, yesterday. Absolutely. Aside of all the things we have been mentioning, um, briefly, we spoke about the website and the documentation while the invitation for you all to join the project, right? Uh, but then let's go a bit more into detail. Um, Selenium 4 was a motivation to bring new features into the project, but also uh, there is brought features to other parts aside the grid and the bindings. For example, we were motivated to revamp the documentation, to have a new website, and we really invested a lot of time into this. A better looking site, docs with code examples that work, and um, but however, we are really far away from being done because Selenium is huge and it has so many things that changes every single day. So docs always need help to stay up to date. Um, I think we ha I've been in the project maybe four or five years already. And I think we have changed the website maybe a couple of times and, and the documentation as well. So I don't know, Manush, do you remember how all this has happened? Oh, yeah, don't ask me. <laughs> I'm glad that the changes are happening right now in the last four or five years. But uh, since I've been around a decade, my first ever contribution to Selenium has started with documentation. Um, I still remember um, I need to find my way around contributing to the Selenium HQ. Dot org, which was the website, the domain name, um, and we were following RST format, and Santiago was um, the brain behind putting together the documentation. Um, I mean, at that point in time, that was the best thing that we could ask for, uh, but that was unmaintained for a very long time. But as Diego, you mentioned, um, 
you know, we we did spend a lot of time. We even had some external freelancers working on this uh, new website for us, uh, and then uh, which isn't exactly solved our problem. So then I know you spend a lot of effort making sure the search works mainly. That is more important for us, given we have a lot of pages around, uh, and especially around the APIs and all of it. And um, I think the website looks fantastic now, and, and I'm so uh, happy. And in fact, uh, we had a lot of people tweeting about it. I think. Um, I think one thing that we should really improve uh, as a selling project is to do marketing more. Uh, and of course, as I said earlier, we are a bunch of nerds and volunteers, so we're not best at it. Um, so given now we have uh, a lot of people like Bill joining us, uh, we'll have a lot more initiatives to uh, take this forward. And we had, you know, people are discovering these pages that we have wrote um, and even uh, tweeting about it. So recently I saw Abhijit, um, he's my good, my good friend who is working out of Singapore, was um, tweeting a particular page that he liked a lot. Um, so that page was nothing but um, some of the basic things to take care of when you start automating. So um, yeah, so all in all, um, documentation looks fantastic and uh, thanks to our teamwork. Absolutely, that's uh, always a result of working as a team. Uh, really individual efforts don't take you long. We like to work as a team to bring all things together. Um, and, and regarding all these changes to the website, it's not only an exterior visible change. Uh, because we have also enabled tooling under the hood that will help us track what users are looking for. Uh, last November, we started monitoring uh, our website and we have a fair amount of visitors. Um, so we have around all this much people and actually it, it's, it's, a, it's really good. Um, and then uh, maybe if you want to know who is visiting more the website maybe this is not a surprise for anyone but the country who is present most um, in our website is is clearly india and and this is just to say that thank you to the to the indian community you are the ones who have really helped a lot to move the selling project forward by your requests your your feature requests your comments and different activities you do to promote the project um, but in addition to that, um, I mean, we're not collecting metrics just for the sake of it. We, we want to have data to understand how you use our website and see how we can improve it. Uh, for example, we're checking the pages that have the most visited and, and visited users and, and how we can improve them to drive traffic to other relevant parts of the site. So now we know that, for example, if we put a link uh, with a special information in the downloads page, almost everyone will see it. Uh, so we are tending to do these type of activities to make our content much better. Um, but in addition to that, from the collected data, we're also getting some eye-opening information. Uh, and maybe this is not really new, maybe this is something we knew for a while, but when you see the data, it just becomes much more clear. Most of our users are on Windows, so we need to pay attention on that. For example, our tests, we only run them in, in, in Linux, and, and most of the developers have either Linux or, or a Mac. And, and then we have to pay attention to that because if we want to enable uh, an onboarding experience for people who want to contribute to the project, we need to pay attention to the Windows users so they are able to contribute in a flawless way as well. And as, as Manush was commenting a moment ago, uh, this, is, this is not only about you know, tracking who's visiting, but we also have a good search, search engine these days. We're using Algolia. And the idea of using this is to understand better what you're looking for into the website, the, the search terms, uh, what comes as a result. But, but more importantly, we're looking for what search terms you're entering and you're not getting any results. For example, in you see, if you see in the image, it's incredible that you're typing Chrome options and you don't get any results in our website. So this is giving us a clear, uh, good input to understand what you're looking for and what has to be improved. You know, all this work is, um, in short, helping Selenium to keep growing. Um, and many positive outcomes together with that. As an example of that, there is a continuous growth of Selenium usage. Uh, David, uh, David Burns, has been monitoring the stats for a while, uh, for us, the whole team, and overall we see a 25% growth quarter over quarter. Uh, for example, the case, uh, if we focus in the Java bindings, uh, one year ago, 
we were uh, seeing downloads about 25 million downloads per month. And today we're seeing, like just the last month in June, uh, we were seeing 45 uh, million downloads per month. So this means that the project is still growing. There is a lot to discover and a lot to work for. And, and something that I found interesting then when we were talking with Manush about this slide is that the growth of the project has normally been very organic. And, and this is just a fancy way to say that this is a group of people sitting somewhere distributed across the world, hacking code, and we have been able to achieve all this, basically to be the lead tool to, to automate browsers. And without any marketing, without any product person, or tech writers, or, or folks just dedicated to, to promote the project, right? Aside of the people who do that in the community in an informal way. So that's why we have some news for you a bit later. And, and in general, what we're trying to do is to get this information and lay out plans to give room to this type of roles in the project to increase our impact and presence. So Bill is a great person that will help us move better in the marketing area. And imagine with all these type of resources and with all these type of people in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the group working with us, imagine what we can achieve in the future. Absolutely. Can't agree more. I mean, there are a lot of blogs and I don't want to come on any other frameworks or anything, but um, you could only see the demand for Suriname is increasing more than ever. And we are so happy to see this. And, and as importantly, Diego mentioned, it's organic, right? I mean, as we don't have a company backing it, we don't have a marketing team, we don't have a product person laying out, you know, what should go next in the features. It's all a bunch of people working in different time zones. As I said, it's all a teamwork and uh, we're very glad to see, you know, it's, it's, it's growing more than ever. Yeah, that's correct. And, and this makes me incredibly happy that, as I have always said, this is a project made for the community and by the community. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, we have been talking about activities that we have done in the project for these couple of years. But maybe we can talk about a relevant topic that we have seen across the talks in the conference, which is um, Web Driver by Die. Um, so. Let's talk about the, 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 the activity that we have been having in the standard on the standard side. So during this last year, the, the browser and testing tools work group uh, led by David, David Burns, um, has been meeting once a month um, to work on this standard, the web driver by die. Um, so in this group, you can find people like, like Jim Evans is there, Simon is there, and also uh, folks from Apple, Mozilla, Google, Microsoft, you have uh, friends from browser stack from source labs and, and, and other ones as well and and we remember that the experience of bringing w3c web driver um, took a while it took a bit to get cooked right but when you have things there they bring huge benefits and all this is work in progress right and and this is why we would like to invite you to have a look at the current draft and help us spot use cases that have not been considered in the specification. Um, however, progress is being done slowly and consistently, and bits of the implementation are already landing in Firefox. Uh, so we're working closely with them to make sure that those features are available through the different language bindings. But more importantly, we're working carefully on a stable API that you can use for testing an API that doesn't require you to update your code every single time we make a new release, and one that does not break your code between different versions. And just to add, also the meeting between different um, companies like Apple, Mozilla, and as well as browser testing groups happens openly. Uh, if you could check out the link that Diego has put here, W3C GitHub IO, um, WebDriver Baidai, um, you could join in as a, a silent observer, if I believe, um, so that you get to know you can also have a chance to listen, but is cooking on the spec and contribute there. And um, this was just a preamble to, to highlight um, that, uh, yeah, I mean, you already see some of the features that are being planned in Baidai thanks to Selenium 4. And, and this has been possible because this is possible because we are interacting uh, with the Chrome-based browsers and Firefox through the Chrome DevTools protocol, right? And our plan has always been to use CDP as a temporary measure to offer these features for you. And when we have by die, then we want to get away from CDP. But 
to be honest, we haven't been really good uh, at showing this clearly and communicating all this to you. So we have seen clearly that the terms by die, CDP, dev tools are typically being used interchangeably and they are completely separate things because the Chrome DevTools protocol allows you to instrument, to inspect and debug the browser, the Chromium based browsers. And therefore it can be very verbose, sometimes hard to debug and it could have breaking changes between releases. So our recommendation from the Selenium project is that if you're using devtools.send uh, and then interacting directly with the, with the CDP um, protocol, then uh, you're making your tests depend on the browser and the CDP version. So we really recommend you to have a look at the existing BIDI methods and slowly move away from DevTools sense, uh, devtools.send. And, and as much as possible, this will make your test really future-proof as new versions get released. Um, so I don't know, Manu, if you have been also around in the conference, so maybe you have seen this pattern around there, people mixing DevTools, BIDI. So what have you seen around there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely a misconception exists. And as you said, we need to improve um, communication and documentation around it. Uh, we also had this lot of questions around it yesterday during the Selenium Grid workshop. Uh, and also today, interestingly, we, Marit and I ran a session called Ensembling, you know, Ensembled Selenium Testing on 4. And we took a, a uh, by die features, not, not an actual by die yet, but uh, geolocation feature, um, which is a classic example, right? So we, I started with saying a friendly disclaimer about, uh, you know, um, so geolocation is still using devtools.send uh, as Diego, so it is still the raw CDP version. So, uh, um, so that's how I started with, um, and so um, as as Diego mentioned, by die is there. It's it's still cooking up. So once we have that standard, which is also one of the reasons why we don't have all the Web Data Tools API covered right now as part of BIDI. Only we have few like network inception, uh, listening to the console logs, and few use cases like that. Um, but I know geolocation and and a few other features are very important. But yeah, I mean, this is just a shortcut for you to get started with DevTools protocol. But still, if you wanted a future-proof version, as Diego mentioned, you should still use the BIDI and uh, or wait for the spec to come. Um, that was about DevTools, and uh, one of the interesting things that we added in Selenium 4 is about observability, bringing in the observability momentum. Um, I think this is still um, after the advent of cloud and microservices, observability is you know, tied along with it, isn't it? So observability is nothing but a mechanism which allows us to track what is going on. You know, It is um, a mechanism which will help you tell um, what has gone wrong before even you know what questions you should ask them. Right. So effectively, what happens is when a request come in, each of the you know uh, nodes uh, you know it gets decorated with a trace ID, and you can actually you know see what's going on, and they collect it with you know a lot of tools available, and you can visualize it. Um, so the main reasons for adding it because um, Selenium Grid Four architecture is very new. Uh, unlike Selenium Grid Three, we didn't even share any code between them. It's a complete entire re-architecture. Uh, we have different components like router, new queue sessions, sessions distributed, and all of them. Um, so which really gets easy to debug when something goes wrong. Well, given the advent of microservices, as I said earlier, the more atomic it is and the more uh, individual or self process it is, it is more easy to debug. And the way we integrated you know, with observability is using the support of open telemetry APIs into the grid, so we can actually see exactly what's happening when and where. So the support for observability originally started um, from a server side specifics, thanks to Simon for starting it. And then Pooja from Browser Stack, you know, um, took over it and, and add all the tracing mechanism. So if you look at the grid architecture on the documentation, you know there is a client side on the left hand side, and then you have a lot of server components on the right hand side. So the original server side tracing was all about to figure out if anything goes wrong between those components, you'll be able to trace it. But thanks to Alexei, he also added, um, you know, it'll be fun or, you know, good to understand uh, to have an end-to-end, -end, you know, tracing path. So right from the client, when you issue, you know, commands like send keys or click, it at the moment it reaches to the remote web driver code and then, you know, goes across the multiple components, you'll actually get a complete tracing view of all the way from the client to, um, you know, complete end-to-end uh, -end tracing from a client to server perspective. So, yeah, I mean, we covered this as part of workshop yesterday uh, and we also have an extensive documentation, thanks to Diego and Pooja. And I also have my own open source project on that, to which will help you to quickly start with a quick shell file. So go ahead, um, check it out. So that leaves us with a question of what's next. Um, I wanted to share a quote that I really love, 
would you like to know your future you know if there is a question someone asks you and if you answer yes i would say think again not knowing is the greatest life motivator right i mean that's no joke um, in our philosophy i wanted to you know continue and see what's way forward and what is next in the selenium project selenium is not alone selenium is an open source and it depends on a lot of uh, open source project and in fact we have lot of open source projects that are built on top of selenium and complement selenium um like say for example web driver manager for example and so we also want to take a moment and to recognize and appreciate them and i wanted dio to talk more about it thank you uh it's because we normally have seen that selenium and the web driver standard are the projects in the ecosystem right but i think we have missed the opportunity to highlight many other projects built around selenium and especially web driver um many features are working out of the box for the users and in general um we have missed the chance to bring them closer and to be a single team all across the web driver ecosystem so we are all together so we have projects like web driver io we have projects like selenite we have projects like serenity js codecep js and so on many of them that we are starting to reach out to them and they are reaching out to to us in a way that we can actually get together talk about the issues we see in the ecosystem and improve them for all of you absolutely thanks jago speaking of open source uh, ecosystem um this is a dream come true for many of us especially titus as he was peered in this initiative thank you titus i know what it means to the project and uh, we are bringing away the community events um so this is where uh, you get a chance to interact with the selenium committers as well as uh, the committers of uh, various different projects that jago just showed um, the idea of the summit is to answer the questions uh, which is a you know very common question that most of you have have you ever wanted to contribute to an open source testing project but couldn't figure out where to start it could be selenium or it could be serenity it could be web driver manager or all the projects that jago just showed um it's happening the automation summit at berlin this time um if you are around europe you could make it and uh, this is just the beginning uh, we will have a lot of lot more events coming to your locations um speaking of that that this wouldn't happen without your support right which is why we need more selenium enthusiasts as a developer relation person i'm more than happy to introduce a new program that we are considering um calling uh, we don't have an official name yet but uh, hmm. you know it's good news to all the selenium explorers um as you all know selenium has been there for over a decade and there are thousands of blogs and tutorials around selenium who passionately share knowledge and selenium and promote it we wanted to take a step towards help recognize them with special badges by announcing say something like selenium ambassador as i said again we don't have a name yet but uh, we will take your help as well but just to give an idea you know an ambassador is nothing but sort of a flag bearer for the product they love and you know they uh, advocated organically they get rewarded for such advocacy a lot of programs like you know cloud native foundation linux foundation uh, you know docker they run these programs and um, you know we also felt it will be good to bring in and recognize and 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 selenium i think 1 million users from india alone and imagine and a lot of you know youtube influencers influencers are there in india like navin uh, mukesh uh, and 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 kartik and a lot of them right and and also many of them have your own selenium blog so it's a moment you know for us to um, help them um and introduce this sort of uh, in recognition for them so this will come along with some rewards of course we will you know we selenium team will officially help them uh, producing content um you know whether it's easy or you know small or big we will help you review it we will offer assistance towards editorial review or technical content review um and some goodies as well um, but yeah enough of talking about it we are considering a lot more but um, stay tuned for this program announcement um, very soon absolutely it's extremely important to recognize all the help you have gotten from the community and and we're looking forward to share the details of this um, new idea we have for all of you uh, but then moving a bit forward um, we we were asking you a while ago for interesting features or the, or features that you expected to be part of selenium and then um, we have received clearly and very loud from you we heard you that you like the batteries included approach so we're starting to design and work slowly but concretely in a firm way about the selenium manager if you attended bonnie garcia's um talk 
he mentioned that briefly, and this is something we're bringing. Basically, we want to take the idea from the WebDriver manager that he built and bring it into Selenium. And the idea is that slowly we will add these features to the to the project in a way that you will not need to care about Chrome drivers is installed or, or Gecko driver and so on. And in the middle, long term, we're looking forward to actually also install the browser for you. So if you don't have the browser running in your machine, we want to install the browser for you. So the person who just gets into the Selenium, uh, into Selenium for the first time, they just have to run the test and Selenium will figure out the rest. Wow, that's exciting, isn't it? So how many of you are excited about it? I'm personally excited um, what lies ahead. Um, I think Boni's um, Selenium manager was a lifesaver for a lot of us. I think uh, the exact same comments was there all around. So imagine, you know, thanks Boni for donating that to the project and officially joining us and, you know, making Selenium better. Um, or the most used or the most asked feature, you know, merging into the Selenium truck, what more you could ask for. Thank you so much on that. So we have more news as well. Um, as I mentioned a while ago, Todd and, and Robert have been working a lot in the Selenium ID. You have seen that we have not released many more new versions. And, and, and this is because Selenium ID is moving to Electron. And the reason behind that is that the version 2 and the version 3 of the ID were very powerful, but there were a few pain points that we couldn't really resolve um, in the core tool of the of the of the because the reason was that it's a browser extension. So, so basically we were using a local playback simulated with JavaScript. And then this was working flawlessly in the extension, but when you were exporting, it was creating um, issues that were being hidden by the simulation of the JavaScript events. Uh, and then when you were playing them back with WebDriver, all this was not working and that was less than ideal. Um, in version four, we're gonna be able to perform a local playback with WebDriver and it's taking all those missed errors and we're, we're going to surface them to you right away before even exporting the, the, the test to the language you're preferring. And this will lead to much more consistency between the test you record and the test you actually execute uh, later in your CI system, for example. And if you want to try it out, um, I forgot to put the link in the slide, but basically you can go to our GitHub repository for the Selenium ID, you go to the releases and you can already download the latest binary for your operating system. We're super early in the process. We don't even have um, code signing certificates for the binary. So maybe in Mac, you have to go around uh, different hooks into, into hooks and loops into, the, into it to get that working. But basically we're releasing minor versions as we move forward. So we're really looking forward to your feedback in forms of issues and, and maybe questions in our Slack channel. And we're really happy to, to move this forward so you can try it out pretty soon. Thanks, Diego. I know we are slightly overshoot time, but we have an interesting slide that most of you are expecting in the last two slides before we wrap up this. Um, Diego, what is Selenium 5? Exactly. What is ahead for us? Exactly. This is just the, the the final part of our talk and, and we want to share this also interesting news that a few people have been asking around already. Selenium 4 was released less than one year ago and they're asking for Selenium 5. So yeah, we're really acting uh, right now. Uh, we're what you call like balancing the stones in a way that we want to be patient and, and, and be in a calm mood to listen to different people about this version. So for now we have talked internally and we have decided on a few things for the version. And, and we don't want to wait so many years until the next version comes, but we want to move a bit faster. So one of the things that we will definitely do in Selenium 5 is to move to Java 11. We will consider if at that point Java 11 is not the LTS version anymore. Uh, I think right now it's Java 17, so maybe we will have to do the big jump. We will um, discuss that and we will find ways to still help the Java 8 users uh, with some compatible um, releases that maybe won't include all the features. Uh, so you have time to migrate if you want. But if you are right now using Selenium 4, we really recommend to migrate your um, under the hood system to Java 11. And in really soon versions, we're gonna start throwing warnings that we will move eventually to, to Java 11. Um, the bindings, the Python .NET bindings are, are in the need of our internal rework because you know programming languages have evolved a lot over the years and basically 
they are now async, uh, await models, and we need to take advantage of them to make better use of the BIDI upcoming features, and also users can do other things while the test is running. And um, to the end, like we were just talking about the Selenium Manager, it will be present in some versions of Selenium 4, but it will, uh, it will be an opt-in. You have actually to say that you want to use it inside the bindings. In Selenium 5, that will be a default. Uh, so Selenium 5 will bring you by default all these features um, that we were talking about. There's a lot of interesting stuff. And as I said before, before um, the Technical Leadership Committee um, does most of this conversation over Slack, which is public. So please go ahead. Um, don't wait until the release or you know raise a GitHub issue. Um, so you could actively participate in the conversation. Um, say these are some of the changes that we're expecting. As Diego mentioned, we are considering Java 11, but then 17 is also you know we're thinking. So there is a um, still a dilemma between different uh, jumping between different versions. So if you're already a Java champion who knows a lot of the stuff, so why not you come and help us, right? Um, so Selenium 5 for us, we want to get Selenium 5 as a release that includes your voice. That's more important for us. And that is also the reason behind including some of the community events like the Test Automation Summit and include other community, the true developer, you know, several events along with you. So please come forward. Um, as I said, that it is public. Contribute to the discussions and we will have Selenium 5 with your voice. With that, uh, I just want to conclude saying um, open source really needs you. Isn't it, Diego? Absolutely. We we are leaving the door open for you to come anytime you want to to poke, to ask, to feel how it is to be part of the team. And, and please join us. Uh, we really need your voice. We need to hear more different voices than the ones we have in the team, different perspectives, different ideas for, for features, and many more. So please, anytime you want, join us in the Slack channel. We will guide you step by step on the way to get uh, into the process to join the team. So really, the door is open for all of you and we're looking forward to see you around in our Slack channel and in our future person uh, events in person. Absolutely. As I said again, Selenium 5 is the release that we wanted to you know, release with your voice. So um, as we showed in a couple of slides earlier, um, uh, showing where the Swiss Army knife of a driver manager, I don't know if you um, noticed, I've said we heard you. Um, so that is, again, a uh, uh, feedback that you all have been asking for. I know there is lots and lots of requests you may have, like, are, uh, you know, adding weights and, uh, you know, and more such like, why not integrate JUnit within Selenium? Um, I know that's too much to ask for, but um, so we wanted your feedback. So please come in and join us. And uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, and so we are so glad to, um, you know, able to present what, uh, you know, Selenium, State of the Union and what lies ahead for us. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Manoj, for helping us, for being here and in, in, in my first keynote and for being a good partner. And actually, you were the one person who was left in the recognition about the Indian contributors, perhaps you're one of the biggest ones. So thank you for your contributions to Selenium as well. And thank you uh, to everyone for being here and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diego.